Now for each trading course day free, we are going to talk about fair value gaps. And this ICT concept is actually very simple compared to other ICT concepts. And when we can get the understanding of this ICT concept, then we can also pair this with the market structure shift that we talked about last time. So let's get into the video. How to identify a fair value gap is actually really simple. It's a free candlestick pattern formation, which means a fair value gap is formed with free candles. The first and second candle isn't that important, but a third in candle is indeed. Now here we can see that we have the first candle, which wicks higher and then closes here. Then we have the second candle, which expands higher. And then we have the third candle. Now we can see that from the high of this wick, the first candle, up to the low of the third candle, price creates this kind of gap where the wicks are not overlapping the second candle body. And as we talked about in the first video, the green box is the body. And we can see from the high of this wick up to low of this wick, price creates a fair belly gap. And this fair belly gap is supposed to act as support to then send price higher. And we can see that price did indeed reach back into this fair belly gap and then expand it higher. And when a Favelli gap is acting as support, is when the bodies are respecting the Favelli gap. And right here we can see that by the bodies not making a close below the Favelli gap. So if we were to see a body close below this Favelli gap, then we would no longer consider it as a Favelli gap. So if we go down here, we can see that we have a bearish fair value gap where we had the first candle right here then we had the second candle which expanded lower and then we had the third candle right here and from the low of this wick down to the high of this wick we see price creates that kind of gap which is called a fair value gap and price closes with a candle body above this fair value gap. So now we will no longer consider it as a fair value gap and it would actually be considered as a inversion fair value gap. But we're not going to talk about that currently. Just to make it a bit more simple to understand, we're going to go over a drawing example. So let's say we had the free candlestick formation where we had one candle here, second candle here, and then third candle here, which created the fair value gap. Let's say we have a fair value gap right here. Then price is going to make a return into that fair value gap. And then we would want to see that fair value gap act as support to then send price higher, reaching an important level. Many people tend to misunderstand how to identify a bearish and a bullish fair value gap. But it's actually really, really simple. It all depends on the second candlestick within the free candlestick pattern formation. Now, if we just go up here to the first example we had, this was a bullish fair value gap. And how can we identify this? It's not using the first or third candlestick. It's by using the second candlestick. If the second candlestick is a bullish candlestick, meaning it's a up close candle, then the fair value gap is bullish. And if the second candlestick in a bearish uh, fair value gap formation, then it is a down close candle. So that's really the rule of thumb. If it's a up close candle, it's a bullish fair value gap. And if it's a down close candle, it's a bearish fair value gap. When we are talking about these fair value gaps, there are some very important areas that we have to keep an eye on. The first one being the low of the fair value gap. The second one being the high. And the third one being the consequent encouragement. And the consequent encouragement is basically the midpoint of that fair value gap. Now, here we can see the price reach up into this fair value gap. As we can see, this is a bearish one as the second candle is a down close candle and we have that free candlestick formation. From the low of this candle down to the high of this candle, we have the candles or fair value gap formation. Now we can also use the rectangle and use it from the high down to the low and then extend that out. And if we want to have the midpoint of that fair value gap, we can go into the settings, press on style, 
and then press on the middle line. Then you would see the consequent encouragement, which is the midpoint of the fair value gap. And if we see that price made a retracement up into this fair value gap, reaching the consequent encouragement, and then after that, it reaches lower. So that is why these areas are so important as price are going to be very sensitive at these areas, especially at the consequent encouragement. That's where price usually have a very strong reaction towards. And if we just zoom out, we can actually see that this was an example that we talked about in the first market structure shift video. And as I also said, we were going to talk about the fair value gap. Now, a way we can combine fair value gaps with market structure shifts is actually that we can see right here, price created a market structure shift. And within this market structure shift, we have a fair value gap from this high up to this low. Now we can see that we have a confirmation, which is the market structure shift, which tells us that price has now shifted the trend. And we have a fair value gap, which could act as support to then send price higher. So let's see what happens right here. We can see that price reached down into this fair value gap. And then after that, reaches higher. A little gem here is that we can use these fair value gaps to recognize if price is still willing to respect the trend. Now, what I mean by that is, remember, we have a downtrend right here. Price is making lower lows and high lower highs. Then price suddenly creates this large close candle. And we created the market structure shift, which is already confirmation enough, right? But on top of that, we can see the price disrespected a bearish fair value gap, which was made to send price lower. So instead of price using this fair value gap to act as resistance, price instead disrespected this fair value gap and then created a market structure shift. So price was very bearish, then disrespected this fair value gap and then turned very bullish, as we see price returned into the favela gap and then that favela gap acted as a support pushing price higher also another word of these fair valley gaps when it's a bullish and bearish favela gap is sibi and busy when it's a bullish favela gap we called it a busy buy side imbalance sell side inefficiency which means buy side was offered but sell side wasn't and a sibi sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency meaning that sell side was offered and buy side wasn't also another example of where price respects the consequent encouragement is right here where we can see that price reached down into the ce consequent encouragement the middle point of a fair value gap and then after that started to really expand higher and another way we can see that price is willing to respect the consequent encouragement of a fair value gap is by price not closing within the fair value gap. And when it taps into the consequent encouragement, then it stays out of the fair value gap. So instead of price making a body close within here, then price instead closes out of the fair value gap and only wicks into the fair value gap something like this as that indicates the price now should move higher and i mentioned this in my candlestick video the last example of the consequent encouragement so i don't bore you guys is that right here we can see that price failed to reach the consequent encouragement as we can see right here of this fair value gap and when price fails to reach the consequent encouragement or the middle point then it usually signals the price is really, really bullish and just wants to move straight higher from there. And we see price did indeed move straight higher into another fair value gap again. From there, moved lower and then disrespected our fair value gap within here. We can recognize that a fair value gap is soon to be disrespected when price is closing within the fair value gap or more specific closing over the consequent encouragement. But price can still react from that fair value gap if it closes over the consequent encouragement. But when price fully closes below a fair value gap with a body, then from there it's become a inversion fair value gap, which I will talk about later in the H training course. But an example of this would be right here. We can see that price 
wicks all the way through the Fibonacci gap, but then closes over it. Then after that, price closes below the consequent encouragement, which indicates that the Fibonacci gap is soon to be disrespected. Price makes a retracement up into another fair value gap. We can see right here. Price do not reach the consequent encouragement, and then from there closes all the way beneath the fair value gap, indicating that it is now no longer a fair value gap. That was it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson on fair value gaps. And if you haven't watched the other videos, please make sure to go do that, as this may sound a bit complicated. For the next trading course video, we're probably going to talk about liquidity, which is buy side liquidity and sell side liquidity. And also, there was a bit more to talk about this Favelli gap as it is a very wide ICT concept, but this was just the basics of the basics.